Hi, welcome back. This is my High Plains Life, and I'm your host, Danny. It is December 20th, 2017, and I'm not ready for Christmas. Are you? Five days, four days away, really, and I still don't have all my presents yet. Not sure what I'm going to do. What I would like to do is to share experiences with these family members that I don't have presents for, rather than just get them something material. They don't need anything. They've got clothes, gadgets, accessories, household stuff. You know, they don't really need anything anymore, and they don't need more clutter. Uh, cluttering up their houses, homes, or lives. So what I'd really like to do is go someplace with them, share a meal with them, do something that will be enjoyed by all of us and remembered fondly, hopefully. So hoping that will work for the people I don't have gifts for and hoping they will enjoy it as much as I will. Okay, so that's getting ready for Christmas. What else have I done to get ready for Christmas? Knit. Sorry, this is supposed to be a knitting show. I have several finished objects. I have the Gleam Shawl by Lisa Much. I used Knitting Fever's KFI Silk Sport. I did extend the pattern as I said I was going to do. And I had to redo the bind off four separate times because I kept running out of yarn. And yes, I tinked back a row. I tinked back two rows and attempted to redo the bind off before I finally got it right. And even then I had to undo a portion of the bind off uh, because I was using a stretchy bind off. and. I had to go back and like that much of it I had to do just a regular bind off on so it's not quite as, I bet that's the stretchy side. Yeah, this is the non so stretchy side. I have not blocked this yet. It's silk. I don't know how silk blocks. I've never blocked anything that was 100% silk before. It drapes beautifully. That's, you know, characteristic. This is how long my shawl is. Ooh. It is beautiful. I love it. I think it's going to be beautiful wrapped around. I don't think I'm going to keep it. I think that this is going to be a Christmas present. Hi, mom, <laughs> for my mom. If she'll wear it, um, if not, then I'll keep it for myself. But we shall see. If the coloring looks okay on me, it'll look good on her. So I'm hoping. That'll work. And I snagged, look what I just did. I snagged one of the drop stitches and made a loop. <sighs> Beautiful pattern feature. Not so practical. Oh well. So this is my first finished object. And my second is a pair of socks. The pattern is Primavera. Let me see who it's by. Cannot remember, but it's on my Ravelry page. I literally started these in 2013. Years. These are my second pair of socks ever that I started knitting. And I took them on our Canada motorcycle trip with me 
And then I kind of just put them away and didn't knit on them for like two years. So I pulled them back out because I was running low of knitting projects and I wanted to finish up some whips. Pulled them back out and boom, like within a week I finished them. Um, Finished the first sock. I know, not blocked. Still not blocked, but on my homemade hanger sock blockers. Um, it's a little more green and the color is showing but if you can see the pattern it's just really simple six row repeat very nice um because the calf the leg is so tall and there's no calf shaping in it i was worried they wouldn't fit me because i have big calves so Instead of making them for myself, I extended the foot a little longer before uh, finishing up the toe. So this is probably fit an eight, size eight, nine foot maybe, seven, eight, nine. My foot sizing is not on. I did the Sweet Tomato Heel by Cat Bordy which I really like. I enjoy it. And I, um, it's easy to remember. It's, you don't have to worry about picking up stitches or wraps, I mean. Um, and you don't get holes in the corners right there. So I like the sweet tomato heel. And I just did a regular toe decrease. When I tried these on to take photos, I realized the calves did fit. And if I had just tried them on, I could have made them for me. As it is, they're not much longer than my foot. I'm going to be gracious and give them away. Let them go, Danielle. Um, Yes. So I have a pair of finished socks that were only four years in the making. <laughs> uh, so one pair of Primavera socks in a size eight. Anybody out there wear a size eight? <laughs> Cinderella. Okay, sorry. I also finished another pair of socks, my Christmas uh, socks that were knit with the Jinx yarn in the ornament self-striping colorway. I showed them to you last time and one of them was already done. They were pretty close to it. I, I was finishing them two at a time. Finished them, sock, uh, toes, heels, and cuffs in a solid green. Then I realized the Zitron Unisono that I used for the toes, heels, and cuffs doesn't have any nylon in it. Neither does this. This is Panda Toes by Crazy Monkey Creations and it has bamboo and merino. It's an awesome yarn. It's very soft. It was nice to work with. No nylon and I made socks. The Zitron Unisono, no nylon and I did toes and heels. I don't know how well these socks are gonna hold up. So hopefully, uh, I won't be so hard wearing on them. And whoever I gift the Primavera pair to won't be so hard wearing on them either. My Christmas socks are in the wash. I machine wash on delicate and then hang to dry. Although I think they are Superwash BFL. So that's why I can't show them to you right now because I've worn them already. I love them. Very warm. I've just worn them around the house. So again, hopefully the no nylon toes and heels it won't be that big a deal. We'll see how many Christmases they hold up. Yay. So those are my finished objects. Whips. I have started a 
new project. Yes, I have been working on my Silistarium, but I, the progress I've made, I've only put in a couple rows and you can't tell a difference, so. Check my project page. In my Mrs. Brown's bag that I got from a friend with these, um, I have my new project. It's called the Silver Cardigan by Christina Temin. Temin? It's for one of my nieces. It is a very bright pink and orange. Uh, it's Lorna Laces, Lorna's Laces Sport Mate. And when I checked the pattern, I had enough yardage to do the size cardigan I wanted. I was trying really hard to match pattern to yarn because this is all I have is this one skein. Bright, pop your eyes out. The little girls, well, I hope will love this. So, it's called Sassy Stripes. Started the pattern, or the project. Pattern is for a size 12 month. My niece is gonna be 18 months. So I went up a needle size from a three millimeter to a 3.25 millimeter, which is a US size three. You see my metric use there? And now I think it's gonna be too big. You know, there I go, outsmarting myself, going up a needle size, thinking it'll work. Yeah, I got my Jingle Bell stitch marker, yay! I love it, just listening to the little ring every time I complete a row. Okay. This is the top of the shoulder. This is the neckline. Oh, I'm backwards. Ah, okay. There we go. Top of the shoulder, neckline, come around to the front. That looks like more than a 12 month old or 18 month old to me. Yes, that looks like two year old. I don't know. So it's got this really simple diamond lace pattern. I'm sorry, I'm not showing things very well. I like how that pink and orange are kind of striping slash pulling up together. It's random enough that it looks good. Um, I think it looks good. So I think I'm too big. I have really wanted something to work on because I finished those socks last night. And it's killing me <laughs> to not work more on this. But I'm going to be in Arizona tomorrow, and I can actually try it on my niece to see how off on size I am. Yes, I can always make it for one of her older sisters, but again, I did it because I only had enough yarn for the size pattern I thought I would be making. This is it. I don't think I can find anything to match it. It's discontinued. Lorna's Lace's sport mate is discontinued, I think. Um, and I did look in every any everybody's stashes on Ravelry, even the in stash, not just the for seller trade. Nobody has this. I'm the only one who has it input in Ravelry. So we shall see. Uh, so I might end up. The whole point of that was to say that I might end up ripping this all out going down a needle size and starting over. Shall see. So, new project. Uh, oh, do you want to see what it's supposed to look like? It is a free pattern, so I don't feel bad showing it to you. I'm not giving anything away. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And there is room in my bag for a second skein of yarn. What could be in there? Finished two pairs of socks, ready to cast on another. These are for my husband, Brian. I already have my needles with them. Um, 
I think they are size one, two, 0.25 millimeter needles because I wanted a nice tight gauge because they're for my husband. They're going to go in his work shoes and his casual shoes maybe to wear with jeans and I want him to wear them. So I want them to be nice and sturdy, a tighter gauge than I normally, I normally use a one and a half uh, US which is a 2.5 millimeter and so these are 2.25 Addy Turbo Rockets, Sock Rockets. Yay, look at that cord. Because I'm doing them two at a time. So I needed a long enough cord. And I think this is a 40 inch, maybe. I'm just switching between English and metric back and forth. Sorry. Okay, so I have my needles ready. I have my yarn caked up. This is Cascade Heritage Paints. Simple workhorse yarn. Yes, it has nylon. And there, that's a pretty accurate color. It's a navy blue with a dark gray, and it's just kind of variegated color, and it's already got dog hair on it. Yay! Even going straight from the skein winder to my project bag. That's pretty accurate. I provided choice of three or four skeins of sock yarn and let my husband choose, and this is what he picked. Um, so here it goes. And another reason I'm using the uh, size one versus a one and a half needle is because it's pretty much a light fingering versus a regular heavy fingering. So again, I'm really, trying to be conscious about my gauge and have a nice sturdy fabric for my sock. This is supposed to be my new Christmas Eve cast on. Um, I love Danny of Little Bobbins Knits and it's not just because we share the same name. Her podcast, her entire aesthetic is gorgeous. I can't do that. And all that pastel would probably drive me crazy because I'm more of a jewel tone person. But I love watching it and seeing what she's done with her home and her craft room and just the way she lives her life. I really enjoy it. So she does a Christmas Eve sock cast on every year. And I have not participated in the past, but I thought I'd do so this year. I have my yarn caked up. I have my pattern printed. And somewhere, it's a very simple free pattern on Ravelry. It is actually called, uh, let me see, Stay at Home Socks. By Bettina Cross. It's got a simple ribbed pearl pattern in it. So I thought if it didn't fit exactly right, the ribbing would help snug it up. And that would be really nice. Best laid plans. I have nothing to knit at the moment. I would have guessed it is on so bad. It's not like I really have to wait for Christmas Eve. I need something to knit in the car while we're traveling. Just saying. These might get cast on sooner than expected. So, new projects. Those are my current whips. And That's all I have on the needles right now. What I have been stocking continues to be cardigans for kids. I, after casting on the silver cardigan for my youngest niece, I have some purple cotton yarn I think I talked about last time that I still wanna do a cardigan for my oldest niece. And, and again, I'm having trouble matching up the yarn with the pattern. I have 440 yards. So I need the right pattern 
to do it in the size I need and not run out of yarn. I intend on doing it short sleeve anyway. They live in Arizona. And again, looking for a simple lace pattern so that it'll let it breathe. Um, the Lorna's Laces is merino, but with the lace pattern again, I figured it would allow plenty of air through and ventilation and wouldn't get too warm. Okay, so still looking for a match for the purple cotton. I have not made any acquisitions. I'm waiting for Christmas to see what I get in case I get any Christmas money. Um, or a trip to a yarn store to buy yarn to make projects for my family for. So I'd rather have them there to help pick out colors and such. I have no spinning projects that I have done. And that's it for on the needles. Under the needle. I do have some sewing projects. I did put together the sewing kit and have some materials for some simple stitched ornaments. Stand by and I'll show you some of my plans. Sorry, I forgot to bring it over before. So I just went on line, found free Christmas stencil printables and selected a variety and printed them out. And my light is gone wonky, I apologize. Um, I will draw these onto the fabric. And this is to make, I have little three inch embroidery hoops, some burlap and embroidery floss and I'll just let the girls do outline of these Christmas shapes and hang them on the tree for ornaments. I'm hoping that works. I am hoping I'm not being overly ambitious and that at least the eldest will be able to enjoy it. Uh, if not, I, I'll make them. You know, I'll have fun. So that's my plan with the nieces. I also have a plan with my mom. She doesn't know it yet, but we're gonna work on a quilt. I have had this fabric cut even, and normally cutting is the most difficult part for years. I wanted to make my project box a black, white, and gray quilt for years. I collected fabrics probably over two years, got the pattern that I wanted, and finally cut the fabric out. Way more fabric than I will ever need for one quilt. I probably have enough black and white fabric to make quilts for all the family. But this is what I'm taking to Arizona to work on with my mom. I'm gonna take my sewing machine because I'm comfortable with it and I know how to sew on it. Um, and the stitches and the tension, etc. And my mom's is like 50 years old. It still works, but I wanna use mine. So I'm taking my sewing machine from this box, packing everything in it that I need. I still need to throw in some thread with some extra bobbins. But ooh, I've got the pattern book, Crazy Curves by Elisa Watson Wilson. Bought this years ago at Quilting on the Green in Green River, Wyoming. Saw a lady making a quilt with it. Let me find you another example. I'm probably violating some copyright law, but it's not 
for sale. Isn't that beautiful? That's done with batiks, but I love the design. It came with templates. I have no clue where they are. Good thing I already cut the fabric out. I have grays, different grays, blacks and whites, tons of different fabrics, tons of different fabrics. Can you see all those? Look at all that. It's crazy. And so I have all the shapes cut out that I'm going to need to make my blocks, my curved blocks. Again, enough for more than one quilt. I'm gonna take it to Arizona and get as much stitching done on it as I can uh, during the time I'm there. That way my mom and I can spend some time together and even though I love my nieces, that way it's not all about them. And being honest with myself, I'm probably going to need a break. And quilting is downtime for me, so I'm hoping to enjoy that with my mom and that'll be nice. I have nothing for in the garden, in the bee yard. I included a quick video last podcast. I don't know if you watched it from the show notes or not. It's about how uh, commercial beekeepers make packaged bees. So I still have not ordered my bees for next spring. I need to do that. A lot of them did start going on sale until the 1st of January. Nobody ships anymore through the mail. I'll have to go pick them up and it looks like the closest place will be Denver. So I have to make my plans for that. As far as off topic goes. Also not feeling well last week. And thank God it was last week and not upcoming over Christmas because that would have really sucked. I hate not feeling well when I'm visiting family. You just want to be at home in your own bed. <laughs> but one of the things I had a problem with last week was when I'm not feeling physically well, it's really hard to mentally fight off depression too, because you're already struggling physically, that it's real easy to slide back mentally. And so I did not get much done last week. No house cleaning. And just a lot of the little things that I had on my list of hoping to get finished got put off till this week. But that's okay. I can struggle for a few days as long as it doesn't continue and I come out of it okay. So that's what I've been struggling with lately. Have a lot to talk about this week, I guess. Um, I received my Christmas card for the Yonder Woman flat envelope swap, and I put mine in the mail. I hope they like it. I failed. I failed again. I did not bring up the card um, that I received. Some yarn was included that my swap partner dyed herself, and it was just a, some really nice, cute little things and some tea. I had a lot of fun making up a movie night 
basket from my local fire station. Yay, Falcon Fire Protection District Station number four. Shout out to ya. I'm such a dork. Um, I wanted to do something for Christmas and the most obvious baked goods, you know, some banana bread, pumpkin bread, Christmas cookies, etc., whatever, something, and drop it off at the station. While doing some research, it came up that a lot of fire stations would no longer accept baked goods. And this is nationwide, you know, they don't know what crazy cat lady's kitchen it came from, or, you know, how clean their oven is or whatever. So I called this station and asked if they accepted baked goods and they said no. The reason they don't accept baked goods is because in Colorado, marijuana is legal. There is edible marijuana products all over. If you want to get it, you can get it. It's the whole point of being legal. Um, and apparently somebody has tried to get our firemen high. Who would do that? Police, I understand. Ha ha, joke's on you. But firefighters? Seriously. I mean, if you're in a car accident or there's a grass fire, you know, kitchen fire at your house and you call a fire station, do you want, you're screwed if the firefighters are high. That's just, that's not a funny joke. So because of edible marijuana products in Colorado, they no longer accept baked goods. Okay. So I was talking to my sister and she gave me an excellent idea. She said they always liked it when they got a red box gift card and some popcorn for a movie night because they do well, they did 24 hour shifts and our fire station does 48 hour shifts. So when they're not on a call, they've got downtime obviously and sleep, work out, watch movies. So I put together a basket with some popcorn, hot cocoa, coffee. Oh, some of those little popcorn paper boxes. You know, popcorn boxes with microwave popcorn in to be fancy. And what is a movie night without Mike and Ike's, gummy bears, and licorice? I also included a thank you card and said they had to share with all three crews. There's three crews on 48 hour shifts of three people each. And I included six. Red box promo codes for Blu-rays. So that's two movies per crew if they share, like I told them to. So we'll see. I went to drop it off and they must have been on a call because there was nobody there. They basically allow open access to the lobby and then the doors require key card entry. So I did ring the doorbell and I could kind of see in through one of the doors um, and it appeared empty. So I left the basket at the door, hoping they would notice it. I posted this on Facebook and that's kind of why I posted it is because I tagged fire station number four, hoping they'd see it and realize there was something there and not miss it. And also because I had a lot of fun putting this together. It was cheap. I spent maybe 25 bucks. It was easy and it was a lot of fun. It was great, you know? So if you need some ideas about what to do for your local fire station or um, community service members over Christmas time, Pinterest is your friend. Um, yeah, it was great. What else did I do? Oh, and I wanted 
to do this for my fire station because it's brand new. They just opened this year and it's literally down the street from me. Literally. We have the same street. Down the way. That's it. That's how close. Thank you for lowering my home insurance rates. Okay. What else have I been watching? Obviously, these are not open yet. They're still wrapped in plastic. I'm taking them to Arizona with me and hopefully my family will enjoy watching them with me. It's Rick Steves. Oh, Claire. This is European Christmas. Look at that. And this, Europe. The complete collection. Come on. Tell me you don't watch PBS when Rick Steves is on. Excellent traveler, smart, great tips. Beautiful, beautiful places he visits, travels, and gets into the history of it. I love watching it. So very excited to own the DVD collection now. Take these to Arizona with me and hopefully watch some with the parents. Um, that's what I've been watching. I've also been watching the Broncos. They've won two games in a row. Okay, I'm going to go eat lunch and then pack. Oh, you can find me on Ravelry, Periscope, and Instagram as Danny Girl Co. And show notes can be found at www.myhighplaneslife.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.